the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter, what is it at? Fourteen. Just briefly, I guess for about 10, 12 minutes here, I'm going to give you some foundational scriptures for all of those people, all of you all out there as well, who are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is uh, this is where I like to take, like I said, every Sunday, every Sunday. Take about 10 to 15 minutes to edify you, to help build you up in some of the things that you already know and hopefully open the door for all of you all out there to be able to walk into that door. Because some of us were born again, but we haven't taken the next steps that's, that's needed. And, and I promise you, as the Spirit of God revealed these things to me, because I know when he first gave me the scriptures about salvation uh, and then about salvation just being a doorway. And the Bible says we are saved by grace. We are saved by grace through faith. Through. You got to go through it. Or rather than not. Yeah, saved by faith. Through, we're saved by grace through faith. Faith becomes a doorway. And that doorway leads to salvation. But you use your faith. Salvation is now, it's an, it's an open door frame. Once you step off into the open door frame, it's, a, it's going into a big house, big mansion, a big building. And most of us are refused. I mean, some of us, I tell you, I can't say most. Back off that statement. Try like erase it out your ears. <laughs> a lot of us through fear, through lack of knowledge, or whatever, what could just be our own selves deceiving our own selves and keeping us from taking that next step in your walk with God. And I believe the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is one of those doorways that people, they scared to go off into the kitchen and see what God is cooking up. They want to stay stuck at the front door of salvation. They want to in a brand new house. They ain't never been in this kingdom before. And now all these new ideas and nuances that God has made available to you, you're afraid to walk into them for whatever reason. <clears throat> for It could be misconceptions. It could be through doubt of your own. Or it could be because you, you just don't understand it. So... Let's just take about 10 minutes here. Actually, I didn't ran my lip for three minutes. <laughs> so let's take about 13 minutes. And let's just go over some things. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. It says, For he that's... Verse 2. Lord Jesus, put this thing out. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now, if you look up the word unknown, if you look up the word unknown, it just it doesn't mean that you don't know it. It just means unlearned. Just like most of us as children, I mean when we were children, we had to learn how babies, we had to learn how to speak. I mean, I want you. Just, I mean, just it's it's that's the way it is. When you when you become an adult and you receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit on your life, the Holy Spirit now, the first thing He starts to do is to help you get control of your tongue, and He Himself will teach you. Or give you a brand new language that you've never even learned. And when you, you remember when you was a, 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 a most of us don't remember. <laughs> Let's just take somebody who knows how to speak another language. Okay, I speak English. I speak Capoco English. I mean, uh, Hispanic, Spanish. Capoco means a little, just a little. Just 
It's very little room. But when I used to hear, when I sit up there and I watch somebody else speak Spanish, I'd be like, huh? <laughs> what? You, you, you know, you try to formulate your words to say it. Well, that's it's, it's almost like, but not like, when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit now starts taking over your tongue, and you... And the first thing you want to do, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to teach you tongues. I'm free, please hear me very careful. I'm not trying to teach you tongues at all. But when the Holy Spirit takes control of your tongue, the first thing your mind is going to want to do is speak the language that you normally speak. I mean, I've, been, I've led people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the first thing they say, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and it's almost comical. But it's not because it's, it's something right there, something at that time where the person is battling through a spiritual wall. And Satan doesn't want you to speak in tongues at all. Remember, we already figured out, he goes through great limps and depths to try to keep you from receiving what God wants you to receive. And it could be through, like I said, it could be through deception of your own mind. It could be through... Um, because you don't understand something. It could be through basically fear. All of it is fear based. Whether you know it or not. But when you start to speak in other tongues. It's unlearned. You don't know it. I mean you haven't learned it. So now God is helping get control of your tongue. And then the first thing you do is. And I, I'll be watching them. I'll be like okay. I'll be, I don't be watching their eyes. When I'm leading them, when I'm re helping them receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'll be watching their lips, and I can see that they want to say to myself, okay, soon you finna say that. Whatever it is that you finna speak, speaking. And all of a sudden, they're bl you know, and, and it, soon as you start doing, soon as you start speaking it, I venture to say everybody that I've ever led to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence speaking in tongues, 80% of them, now it's twenty. It's a good small, small chunk. But eighty percent of them, they it just flows. But the other ones, there was. If you speak one or two words, you just speak it. I remember the first time I got baptized for the Holy Spirit. I think I spoke maybe three or four words, and because I didn't understand these scriptures, Satan jumped all over it in my mind and said, "Don't say that. You sound crazy." <laughs> and I looked and said, ain't nobody else doing it. And I looked around, everybody else was doing it. But he had me thinking, well, nobody else doing it. I mean, and, and all of that took place in a matter of seconds. But I showed you this first. But let's go back and let's just see what Jesus referred to it. Hold your finger there. Go to the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. <clears throat> Here's Jesus. Here's Jesus doing it. Saying this in verse 26. John chapter 14. Look at verse 26. It says, But the, y'all there? Okay, good. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance and whatsoever I have said unto you. Y'all see that? We know now the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So now what does the Comforter do? What, is his, what, what, what do we see? One of his attributes. The Holy Spirit's attributes. He's a comforter. He comforts. He comes in to comfort. Like I said, the first thing he does when he sits on you, he begins to help comfort your mouth. Because the Bible, all throughout the Old Testament, it tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So what's the point of me speaking this unlearned language? Very, very good question. I know that's a, that's a lot of people want to ask them, how come I just can't pray it in English? How come I just can't pray it in my known, known tongue? 
Well, you would have to go back and read through the book of Daniel and what Daniel had prayed to God. And soon as Daniel prayed and believed to hear, hear from God and receive from God, Satan heard the same prayer. And soon as God dispatched the angel to go answer Daniel, Satan jumped all over that and held that angel up. When that angel showed up to Daniel, he said, Daniel, I have come for your words. The same words that you wanted to know about, the same words that you spoke that you, you set your heart to hear from God. I was sent 21 days ago, but the prince of Persia held me up. And I had to call and get some reinforcement to bust him in his head just so I can get here to you. Now you see, <clears throat> hold your finger there, go back to, go back to 1 Corinthians, now you see where it says, when a man speaketh in an unknown tongue, he does not speak unto men, but unto who? God. But how be it in the spirit, he speaks or speaketh continuous mysteries. The word mystery just means a hidden truth. It's just a hidden truth. Jesus said it like this in Acts chapter 2. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See, some of us get so focused. I've been, I came at the angle from the tongues part, part because a lot of people, because they're born again, they think that they already have the Holy Spirit on them, and that's not true. You have the Holy Spirit within you. That same Holy Spirit that's in you, he now wants to sit on you. Why is that? Remember, under the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit only came on kings, prophets, and priests. Kings, prophets, and priests. Guess what? You are now a born-again believer. You are now a child of God. Via the Holy Spirit from within. You are now born. God birthed you. You are now born of God. But you're also a king, a prophet, and a priest. The Bible calls us a holy priesthood, a royal nation. He is king of kings. What did the prophet come in at? Any one of you, and don't think as a prophet, as a pulpit ministry, but any one of you all, if you're born again, you can prophesy over your situations. It's walking by faith. Call, it's called call those things that be not as though they were. Any one of you all, you can prophesy over your children. You can lay hands on them, and you can say, you will be blessed of the Lord, and highly shall be the favor of the Lord in your life, and you will walk in holiness and uprightness. And you, 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 can, you can confess those things as a prophet over your children. Not necessarily have to be called to pulpit ministry. God gave you the Holy Spirit as a gift for you. For you to become the, the victor that he has already made you. Oh, glory to God. And and, and, and and this is what the Holy Spirit notice I said it already Let me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read, just read it just going to read it Acts chapter 2 you can write it down and put it in your notes Acts chapter 2 it says no, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. God wants you to become that victor wherever you go. Remember the song or what the scripture says in the book of Deuteronomy? I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed everywhere and wherever I go. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. I bind every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is on you and you are confessing these things. And Satan, 
He can't stop you because now you are speaking these words and men don't understand you. God set it up so that you don't even understand yourself and you speaking directly to him. Remember, tongues is an unlearned language that you didn't learn. So now, if you want you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit sitting on you, he's correcting the words out your mouth so that you can start. When you speak in an unknown tongue, go back on the first Corinthians. <clears throat> when you speak in an unknown tongue, look what it says. Verse uh, 14. 14. Chapter 14, verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayer, but my understanding is unfruitful. Your spirit prayer. So now, God is saying, your born again spirit, with the spirit of God on the inside of you, when you're speaking in tongues, that's your born again spirit, man, praying directly to God. And keeping your understanding, which is in your mind, out of the picture. <clears throat> See, and see, I've learned how to do this over time now. When I'm speaking an unknown tongue, your mind at that moment is completely being left out of the picture. And you have to, you, you learn how to just corral your mind because you'll be speaking an unknown tongue and Satan will jump up in that fried chicken, Kool-Aid. Now go to work. And he, all, all these other kind of stuff would just be jumping in your head. And uh, I've learned it, it, it become. and what does the Bible say? Uh, God keeps me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. You learn how to just corral your mind and stay focused on God. I'll be quote now I quote a scripture in my brain or something. Or I think about the love of God. I, I, I said about I should love. Lord Jesus, He loves me. Hey, go then in my life, Shaki de, bro, send it. And then once once that thought starts to dissipate in your brain, I say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You're so good to me. Hey, robo kure ba shate. What's going on? I'm put. I'm still taking words out of my mouth. My ear is going back into my ears so that my mind can stay focused on this thing. And sometimes you you'll get there. You'll be able to do it for quite a while. Especially when one of them, 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 them big ones drop. Some, the goodness of God just sits in on you. And you, you are already in praise and worship. And he, and you, you go on and on. And that, that'll go on for, it, it depends on you. Me, I've prayed in tongues, I think, at the most, any good length of time, 30 minutes. Tops, I think, straight. <laughs> I mean, but sometimes, most of the time, it's only five, ten minutes here, five, ten minutes there. But I pray in tongues not nine times out of ten, all throughout the course of the day. I mean, literally, I'll be at work here. I'm about to rush so to the wash. Get in the shower. He get up, I to Going to the bathroom. When I'm making tacos and burritos on my job. Get up, I'm rush to the wash. When I'm driving in the car. He can't do this so to the. I'm I'm constantly doing it because I want my spirit man to pray directly to God. Because I know that I'm praying something that I don't understand that is going directly to God. Look at verse 17. He says, for thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. Why did he come back and say something twice about the other is not edified? He's reinforcing your mind ain't going to understand what you're saying. He's giving us the warnings here. And they're not bad warnings. It's not, that's not a bad one like, don't cross that street. <laughs> It's a warning to let you know that, hey, at this moment, your mind is going to be vulnerable because you're leaving your regular senses out of the picture. And a lot of people are afraid of that because they haven't learned how to corral their mind yet. Or people say, well, what's the point of me speaking in tongues? What's the point of me doing this? Well, why, why, why? We just, we just established that. 
you want your spirit man praying. I do want you to read in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, because that's what I wanted to go to. Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to close it up right here. Verse, chapter 2, verse 4. And this is when the people, first time, received the Holy Spirit on their life. The very first time. Jesus had been died, rose again from the dead, and gone on back to the gone on back to the Father. And this is the day of Pentecost. Um, that that full uh, it's it's like a high Sabbath that was up under the old custom up under the old testament. It was the old covenant. And they were all there in praise and worship to God. And this is on that fiftieth day where the Holy Spirit came in and just sat down. The Bible says a couple of the next verse up. It says came in like a rushing wind and he sat down on them. But look the key thing what it says in verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. Here's the key part. As the capital spirit, which is always referring to the Holy Spirit, gave them utterance. I want you to take that word utterance. Go look it up. Don't take my word for it. Go look the word utterance up. It just means an opportunity to speak. Or I like to say it like this. Words to say. Because Satan will have you thinking that you're just speaking gibberish. You're not speaking gibberish. You are speaking words coming directly from God. God is giving you these words to speak. Go check it out throughout the text, uh, scripture. When the book is, and uh, the uh, I think it's in the book of Luke. It's also in the book of John. I think also in the book of Mark. I know it's in the book of Luke, and uh, it's in the book of uh, Matthew, 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 and Luke, where Jesus spoke in tongues. Remember when Jesus, uh, uh, the little girl, who was who was dead, was and, and Jesus said she only merely sleepeth, and everybody thought she was crazy. And Jesus, Jesus, he spoke, he said, Tela and I, I can never pronounce those words. <laughs> Which just means a uh, damsel arise. He spoke in tongues. And if our Lord ain't so high and mighty to where he won't speak, I ain't speaking in that stuff. It came from me, but I ain't speaking in it. <laughs> but, who are we to deny the same gift that Jesus spoke in? Remember Jesus, when he was here on the earth, he operated not as God, but he operated in the earth as a man who had the Spirit of God in him and on him. We see movies and pictures all the time, and especially in some sections of uh, some sections of Christianity. You know, some denominations where they they spiritualize. They have this Jesus, and they got this big rainbow around his head and a dove right here on his hand. And then they have this light in his heart. The light represents the Holy Spirit, and the light rep the, the the ring around their head represents the Spirit of God coming on them, sitting on them. He has this big halo. That's what the representation is. If Jesus ain't too proud to receive the Holy Spirit in him and on him, let's go. And I did mean pride. He, Jesus, humbled himself. He said, I'm going to operate the same way I want them to operate in the earth with the Holy Spirit in them and the Holy Spirit on them and using the word. So now for all of you all out there who have you baptized for the Holy Spirit, and you have not been speaking in tongues a whole lot, man, jump on it. Just say, man, I'm going to speak in tongues every single day. This is a gift from God. I'm going to talk directly to the Father. And all of you all who are not baptized for the Holy Spirit, I hope this encourages you to take that next step. We give the, we give the invitation around here every so often to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
And I want you all to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to. Because why? Just go to the Father. Just say, Father God, I want to receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I want your power on my life. I want them, I want my spirit, man, to be able to pray directly to you. I want to be able to speak these mysteries. I receive the Holy Spirit right now. And you just sit there. You just wait. If you if you want to, just have, so you can have a touch or something. You can feel something. Lay hands on yourself and say, I receive the Holy Spirit now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you said if I ask for the Holy Spirit, you'll give him to me. And I want that. You said that over in the book of Luke. That's one scripture we didn't go to. In the book of Luke, you said if I ask for the Holy Spirit, you'll give me the Holy Spirit. And I receive the Holy Spirit now. And let the Holy Spirit just fall on you. And you speak. Do. And you speak every day. Every day. Every day. Why? It's a gift from God. He wants you to have the Holy Spirit on your life. He wants you to. So that you can be able to walk in the victories that God has ordained for you to walk in. I hope y'all got something.